You know what they say about the CCP or the Chinese Communist Party? That if you run the party, you run China. So who exactly runs the party? Its General Secretary, that's Xi Jinping. He became the General Secretary in 2012. It's been 10 years. Ideally, she should be stepping down because there is a term limit and she has exhausted his. But Xi Jinping is not ready to retire. He will be clinging on to power, breaking the CCP's norms, starting a third term and positioning himself as a leader for life. China's president for life. All of this will happen starting tomorrow, the 16th of October when the 20th Party Congress will convene. It will be a momentous time in Chinese history. Xi Jinping will get his third term in office. So what will it mean for China and the world? We'll answer this question tonight. Hello and welcome. My name is Priyanka Sharma and this is Gravitas Plus. The Communist Party of China was founded by Mao Zedong. Most of you have heard about him. Mao was the founder of the People's Republic of China. When Mao died in 1976, Deng Xiaoping took charge. He became the CCP's general secretary and China's president. Deng wanted to change the system, prevent leaders from holding power for too long. So he put an informal system in place, wherein a general secretary was not allowed to be in office for more than two terms. One term is equal to five years, which makes a general secretary's term limit 10 years. Jiang Zemin succeeded Deng. He served as China's president for 10 years. Then came Hu Jintao. He too served for 10 years. Hu was succeeded by Xi Jinping. He came to power back in 2012. Xi has already served 10 years in office. He has exhausted his term limit. According to party traditions, he's supposed to pass on the baton to the next general secretary during the party congress. Now, this Congress meets every five years. It last met in 2017. And it is meeting again tomorrow. Every year during the Party Congress, leaders across the hierarchy retire. Some because of age. Some because of underperformance. And some because of the term limit. Xi Jinping falls under the third category. But he is going nowhere. Now, this is not an abrupt decision that he has taken. The plan's been in place for a while now. In 2018, China removed the term limits for the president, allowing Xi to be president for life. But the CCP still has an unwritten term limit. What happens to that? Well, Xi's propaganda machine has already ensured that the party accepts the general secretary's breach of precedence. How, you ask? By celebrating Mao Zedong himself, China's last leader for life. Mao was glorified so that people see nothing wrong when she walks down Mao's paths and becomes the next leader for life. And now coming to the question of what you should expect from Xi's third term. Human Rights Watch has one answer. It says, Xi's third term is a threat to rights, both inside and outside China. To understand why, we must do a little recap of Xi's first decade in office. You see, ever since coming to power, Xi Jinping has been waging a war on human rights. He has imprisoned critics. He has overseen enforced disappearances, spearheaded anti-corruption purges. Here are some examples that you may remember. In 2018, actor Fan Bingbing disappeared. No one knew where she was for three months. Also in 2018, former Interpol chief Meng Hongwei disappeared as well. Before vanishing, he sent a text message to his wife. It was a knife emoji. More recently, tennis player Peng Shuai had gone missing. In November 2021, Peng accused a former Chinese vice premier of sexual assault. She resurfaced three months later, but by then Peng's story had changed. All of a sudden, she was claiming that she never really accused anyone of assault. And all of this is just one part of the story. In the last decade, Xi Jinping's administration has also gone after journalists. In 2021, the Foreign Correspondents Club of China said that at least 20 journalists were expelled or forced to leave the country. They were harassed, intimidated. Some journalists reported facing surveillance, even threats of legal action, obstruction. One journalist told a British broadcaster that even when he was leaving the country, Plain-clothed policemen followed him all the way to the airport. 
even through the check-in. During the COVID-19 outbreak, a citizen journalist named Li Zehua disappeared. He was reporting from the front lines in Wuhan, telling stories that China did not want the world to hear. You see, there is no press freedom in China whatsoever. There is also no regard for the most basic human right. I'm talking about the right to life. And how can we forget what Xi Jinping is doing in Xinjiang? His government has arbitrarily detained more than a million Uyghurs and Turkic Muslims. They have been put in detention camps. Their children have been snatched away from them. Women are being raped. Men are being forced to work in fields. Their organs are being harvested. Experiments are being done on them. Xi Jinping is orchestrating a genocide in China. The last decade also saw him spreading wings outside the country. You all saw what happened in Hong Kong. One moment, the city-state was marching for democracy. The next moment, it's a replica of the mainland. No dissent and no free speech. The Hong Kong security law has given Beijing the right to play puppet with Hong Kong. The fact is, she likes to exercise extreme control, but this hobby of his has often yielded negative results. The zero COVID policy is a classic example. His obsession with quashing every outbreak, his refusal to learn to live with the virus has cost China its economy. The country's economy has shrunk. There is poor consumer demand. China's big tech firms are firing employees. We are talking about the likes of Alibaba, Tencent and Didi. Youth unemployment rate hit a record high of 19.3% in June of 2022. So much for zero COVID. Now that you are well versed with the past, let's cut to the present. From where I am standing, it looks like the worst may be yet to come. And this is vis-a-vis -vis both China and the world. We are already seeing signs of a more dangerous Xi. In the days leading to the party congress, she cracked down on disloyalty. He told the top ranking leaders that no one is beyond reach. To cut to the point, Xi's third term in office would mean more authoritarianism, more suppression, a harsher crackdown on dissent. The coming years would see a revival of a personality cult in China. One-man politics. And guess what? Billions outside China will also be affected by the whims of this one man. And I'm going to tell you why. There are more than 120 countries who trade with China. All of these countries will face some kind of ripple effect of Xi's domestic policies. Britain's MI5 thinks that Beijing is the biggest long-term threat to economic and national security. Not to mention global order, it's not news that Xi Jinping thrives on expansionist tendencies. We in India have seen this play out in Ladakh, in Arunachal Pradesh. Xi also has his eyes set on Taiwan and emboldened Xi Jinping will try to do what Mao couldn't and that is to annex Taiwan. In the coming years, you should expect more muscle flexing in the South China Sea, more militarization of the Indo-Pacific and a more assertive foreign policy. See, the thing is, Xi Jinping is not shy of saying his dream out loud. He wants China to become a global superpower by 2049. A fully developed, rich and powerful country, she calls it the Chinese dream of great renewal. Xi's third and consecutive terms in office as both the General Secretary of the CCP and the President of China will be about realizing this very dream. He is already modernizing Chinese forces, expanding China's global footprint. Xi Jinping has poured more than $1 trillion into his signature project, the Belt and Road Initiative. Expect all of this to escalate further. Also expect China to become a bigger threat to democracy. She once said, autocracy should be quote-unquote new option for countries who want to speed up their development. What makes you think she is going to stop at Hong Kong? But before he can get back to realizing his dream for China, Xi Jinping must first seal his place in the Communist Party of China. And that's exactly what the 20th Party Congress is going to be about. It will be a week-long event. There will be 2,000 delegates seven members of the Politburo Standing Committee. And it will all boil down to that one moment when she will walk down the red carpet with the Standing Committee behind him and the 1.4 billion people of China watching closely. That will be Xi Jinping's day in the sun, almost like his coronation as the Emperor of China. At 69, the Chinese President Xi Jinping will become the most powerful Chinese leader in the country's modern history.